So I want to thank everybody uh, for coming tonight uh, to our uh, presentation of projections. It's a once a month event for, I see a lot of new faces. So I'll just give you a little bit of background. We've been doing it for about five or six years. And it's a once a month, sometimes twice a month event where we have photographers and artists come in and speak about a particular body of work. Um, and it's very casual. We have a chat room where you can put in any questions um, that you have and we just sort of uh, feed them into the presentation. So we look forward to you guys um, being engaged. I do have to thank a few of our sponsors who have been with us for a while. Uh, Photo Shelter, uh, Epson, Pro Photo Daily, American Photographer and Archive Magazine. Um, they help us in a myriad of ways. Um, our next presentation is uh, October 27th, but tonight we have Janice Mellon, Aaron Karp, and we're going to start with Lynn Bianchi. So let's let her take over the screen and all the world's a stage for you, Lynn. All right, and I'm so glad to be here tonight with my dear friend Janice Mellon and fellow photographer Aaron Karp. And tonight I'm going to give you some overviews of some of the portfolios that I've years. I'm going to start with my knife. Aaron's not on until 420, but someone else is on. Can you hear me? Ron, mute yourself. <laughs> yeah, what did she say? She's not muted. Oh, he is. Yeah. yeah we are. I can hear you. He's talking. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, no, well, so tonight I'm going to start with a portfolio, some different portfolios I've taken over the years. I'm going to start with the first nude I ever took which is from my Nyjah series. And I met Nyjah when he came to my loft with his boyfriend in 1982. I was doing still lifes with pearls at the time and he loved my still life work and he told me he always wanted to be photographed in pearls. And I said, okay. So he came over in daylight, all these photographs were taken in daylight. And by the way, we never got to the pearls, but we did get to great light from my loft and this is one of the first uh, news studies I took of him. It's Nyjah Blind Study. It's in the Brooklyn Museum and Museums in Europe. This is Nyjah with black lines. And the most wonderful thing was I adored working with them. And I devised a system where I hand toned the body with selenium so that it would jump off the page. So it <laughs> controls. You see the background is separated from, from the body itself. It was a laborious work, but I love to do it. Lynn, Lynn, let, Lynn, let me ask you a question. How does that relationship build between you and a particular uh, model? Like, how does that start where, you know, you, you when, like, when do you both realize we're connecting? Immediately. <laughs> immediately. It began immediately and it lasted in, until his death, actually. But he moved to Europe in 1987. So he had that wonderful personality. He was a special person with a grand personality. Um, it was very special and my husband loved him too. Everybody did. So it was very easy with nausea. But I really, really have a great connection with everybody I work with. And you'll see in my heavy and white, I'm friends with them since 1998. We're still all in contact with each other because it's a very close work. Um, I have a thought, an idea, I create the design and said I talk to people and then we do it. This is lovely for my body image series. I was very interested in shape and weight and eating and how people felt about the body. The interesting thing about this is it's taken from a Lalique base, gave me the thought of how to, how to position the bodies. And if you take away the heavy picture, it's not very good. So you've got to see how people about their bodies, but how important different shades were to make for a beautiful image and a beautiful composition. And through this, we all got to like our bodies more. So this is also from my heavy and white series. And this is called Servitude 2. Servitude 1, excuse me, I made 1 and 2. And um, this was about eating shape and weight, but everything was talking about body image. And no matter what, even though she's heavy, there's grace and beauty to her. And I made this white, and I, I developed my own film and created my own set so that you would see body image as concept, not fleshy. 
you would get more of the idea. And this is women with umbrellas. My husband bought the umbrellas back from Japan because I had a vision of how to see these people same and different from the back. And the umbrellas I, I thought had to be, a, you know, God's mirror so that you would not feel too weighted down by them, but that you can concentrate on the rear ends. And there's <laughs> actually eight rear ends here, <laughs> all different. The hardest thing to do with this, this image was they wanted to perform for me and I had to convince them not to move. And so I did. And this is called Sabaris because we had such good times together. And this is like Greek women sitting in a circle having a great, great time. And this is actually on the spot because these things happen right then and there. This is spontaneous. Every image actually was caught as, as the image, as the image of time. And this actually was going on at this time and I caught it and I called it Sabaris. And what are you shooting with? Lynn? These are silver gelatin prints, all of them. It's not, it's analog. They call it analog today. When I was doing it, it was just silver prints. They're all tons of gold. So after I printed them and cleaned them and everything, then I put a gold toner on them, on them to cool them. They use special paper. So then I got into objects and I didn't see why any object shouldn't have a picture on it. So I would buy various objects like irons, which represented women, femininity, work, ironing, and pinups. And I bought these irons and then I would um, shoot for the objects. And I had a wonderful time shooting for various objects that I made. I made tables, I made boxes, all kinds of things. And I just show, decided to show a couple. And this is my eye box. At that time, I put eyes everywhere. I put eyes in eye boxes. These are antique eye washers with silver gelatin prints that I had a medium in these where the silver gelatin prints were um, encased in a medium. And then I did many, many eye pictures. And I found out later that indeed I was having an eye problem. <laughs> <laughs> so Lynn, when you come up with an idea like this, do you labor over it? Or I want to shoot eyes, I want to shoot iron. I want to shoot surfaces. Like, how does that work for you? I was hoping that they get visions and I have to produce them. So it isn't a matter of laboring over anything. The ideas come up in me and then I have to make them. And if so, I do. It's not like, should I, shouldn't I? It's like, I have to. Right. The, then I do it. Why I chose those, I because in older times, people use eye droppers like that with pork acid to clean their eyes. And I was still of an age where people clean their eyes with eye, I, um, they would put it to their eyes, lean their head back and use the droppers. Okay, so next series is a transition. I was transitioning from the gelatin dark room, which I adored to something more in digital. So these are scanned silver gelatin prints printed on transparency. And this globe represented to me the continuing life force in the stomach, passing on from one person to the next, holding on to the life. And this is called contemplation. It was actually the first image that I printed. And this is called ampersand, like the and. And um, this is also from that series of globe. And I also did it in gold leaf. But these are the globe, and I designed a special tissue. They're suspended in plexi. There's a tissue in between the pieces of plexi, so that when a stroke hits the image, it glows electric. So you really think there's an electric bulb inside. I love doing it. And this is balance from that series as well. This, uh, this is an accurate to what it is because the gold leaf is very, uh, it's hard to photograph, but these were also double gilded with 14 karat gold, 22 karat gold, and it made for a beautiful image. The silver gelatin on transparencies. And then I wanted to show you something I did at the beach. Now you can't see this because it's a flat surface, but this is in three layers. I love layering and that's how I got to 
the plexi layering, the bull leaf layering, the nigel layering, even the, the my heavy and white layering. And actually, these are three pieces of plexi. So there's a bottom layer, there's a top layer with just this that fits on top, and, and a smaller plexi and a layer on top of that. So and where is this shot, get, Lynn? Where? Coney Island. This is shot in Coney Island. I love Coney Island. So in person, you have dimension. And I love dimension. And it was interesting. And this is called Men Four Times. It's also in a layer. I shot this also in Coney Island when the sand was really blowing. And I wanted to show motion. And so in there and not there. So this is in layers. There's a top layer, a bottom layer, and another layer. So in person, you get to see the dimension because that's, <laughs> that's what I like. And now I'm going to show you, um, I, I'm also a video artist. I create a lot of videos. I just showed at the Alamo. I'm going to be showing in Cinema Village. I'm going to be showing next week in another theater here. I, I make many different videos. They're short, they're experimental. I, I, I created this idea from seagulls that I saw in Florida, and it has to do with the continuation of life and death, where the seagulls yeah, in the ocean come from. Yeah, You'll and, see how these are and, and Lynn, like when, when did you start to get into video? How well, was that, tr that transition for you? So I started video. I also used video with photography because I combine both, because I see myself as a photographer that continues the moment through video. That's what I like. So usually my imagery is made up of both. Not always, because I don't limit myself to anything. But, um, oh, I have to look at the camera. So I forget the camera's there. So anyway, this, is, this was taken in Sarasota. You'll see there's rain over the palm trees that was taken through my window. That's the ocean. This is the seagulls. And you'll see she's playing a violin. It's original sound from, from a violinist that I just can't think of her name right now. She's so wonderful. But Funda, she's a well-known violinist and she played original music for this. I'm just showing excerpts now. Teasers, as they call it. So the full videos are longer, a little bit longer, but my videos are about three or four minutes, some five to eight, but usually four. And each video you're going to see is, is a teaser. I was afraid that people would have to sit four minutes and 64 seconds. It's a lot. This video I'm really proud of. It has to do with plastic in the ocean. It's a teaser. By the sea, by the sea, by the beautiful sea, and me, and me, oh, 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 so we have to be Jewish. How's the sound now? 
I'm not hearing the sound at all, Lim. Yeah, like I'll say, from the room. Something's happening to the Wi-Fi. Yeah, you guys are having technical issues. There you go. Is it a problem with the sound? Yes, they can't hear the sound. It's sort of intermittent. Zoom and video, it's a little bit of a problem. Uh, mm. I'm sorry. Yeah, Lynn, where was the shot? I'll tell you. Um, it was shot in Pony Island, and also partly from the ocean gave me the plastic to use. And the why is where you use this internationally to teach people, to show people all over the world about plastic in the ocean. I have permission this year. And there's great sound to it. I'm so sorry. Yeah. This this plastic came from a carbon because so this is 80 years now. It's too warm for me. I'm not going because what am I gonna do there? So I'm sorry you couldn't hear the sound. It's really amazing because yeah, next time. Next time. <laughs> No, no, let, let's hear that. Maybe the next one's better. Okay, I hope so. Or else we're going to have to restart it. So this this that I'm going to show you now, so I took from my deck here. I just recently did it, and it's been showing all over, in the, you know, all over Europe, and it's showing a lot in New York. And this is a teaser, not the full video. So good luck. I hope we can hear it. My neighbors performed. <laughs> Yeah, that, that was, was a little good. better. Yeah. This is just the teaser. The full movie is playing now, but I I didn't know how much time it would take, and to sit for the full key four minutes is a long time for people. So I can always send a person a download link to be able to play it themselves. How about the film festival? Yeah, the film festival. Yes. So this just played at the Alamo in Brooklyn in downtown Brooklyn, full screen, and it was exciting to see. And it's going to be playing in Cinema Village on 13th Street at the end of October. And it's going to be playing on 44th Street on the 21st in the Project Room and other places. And also it's been playing all over the world, actually, to represent my feeling about New York. Great, great. And do you sell prints um, from your website? I sell prints well, actually directly if people get in touch with me and I've sold my books on the website and I have some vintage uh, prints also for sale right now on my store and I'm going to add to my store. But if people are interested um, to not purchase any prints, they can um, purchase directly from me, thank goodness. There you go. And so do you feel that you're going to stay more in the moving image or you'll just be keep, keep on going back and forth? Well, 
I have no idea. Right now, I've lost a lot of my personal assistants. I work one-on-one -on -one with people because, as you know, I, I hate the technical, but I'm the director and the artist on the job, so I take everything myself, and I work one-on-one -on -one with someone technically. So I lost the people now because um, Broadway opened and other things opened, and they have important positions. So also, I'm working right now on travel images that I took here in Coney Island, Italy, and Greece. I'm printing them in interesting ways. And I'm putting my videos on hold for now because festivals, even if it's on Vimeo, they want to reconfigure it to their particular screens. But I have a whole lot of videos waiting. I'm going to be doing table settings, surreal table settings that I took here. And mm. so I'm very busy. <laughs> You know, with and I never stop working because it's my passion. There you go. Great. Yeah. Great, great, great. That was terrific. And I have to do my passion. Yes. Why not? Why not? And, um, and do you um do you ever go back to those other models and you know thinking of like doing something else with them over time, sort of like a time capsule? Everything has to do with the time that I'm doing it. I'm friends with these people. Right. So now I just visited Samantha, who's one of my main models, who's upstate. And Anne Marie, the heavy model, she lives now in France. And Nina's got out in California. And we, we're always in contact with each other. Mostly I am still friends with everybody. Right. Elena. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't think about what I'm going to do with somebody when, or am I going to do it again? <clears throat> if the idea is compelling to me, I produce it. Right. I do what compels me. Okay. Not, it, it, it's sort of like um, like the woman with umbrellas. I made my poor husband bring them all back from, from Japan because of the concept. So these concepts compel me. Right. And then you act on them quickly. I do. And I, and, and I still see myself as a photographer continuing, continuing a big moment in time. Because when you just see the moment, you don't always see everything that's happening within that moment. And that's very satisfying for me to be able to produce. Yeah. And do, do you write notes? You know, like well, the I idea... I write no no notes. It's a visual. I get visual, right. visuals, and then it pushes me. And then I I I uh, I'm pushed by my visuals. Great. That really was terrific. Everyone in the um, in the chat room, you know, loves your work. And okay. and, and 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 say your um say your website again so okay. people can see. My, so my website's lindyonty.com. We'll link it. We'll, we'll link it in the chat. Okay, oh. great. Great, Elena. Yes, and uh, I'm glad they liked it because I certainly love doing it. Yeah, and um, I, like I tell all the artists that that um, that come on, when you have new work and you want to show it, just let me know. I'd love to have you come back. That's oh, always, yeah. It's always a, stand, a standing offer. What a pleasure, and thanks for your patience with me. No, no, no. You're, um, you're a gift to have on. Oh. So, so we, we thank you very, very much. Thank you. Um, My so, friend of Doug Rice is here, and I, I did this dinner conversation. They were kind enough to perform uh, this dinner conversation with me in my loft on Lispenard Street, and he's a wonderful sculpture and painter. He's right there, Douglas Rice. <laughs> okay, great. Well, if he reads, we'll have him... Um, as well. So we, we thank you very much. We're going to have now Aaron Karp come on and we're going to take, we'll take a, a minute break. Everyone to, if you want to stretch a little bit and then uh, we'll have, we'll have Aaron. Lynn, thank you very, very much. Thank you, Lynn. You were great. Great job. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Well, let's um, get Aaron to take over if you want to. Yeah. Get a glass of water or something. We'll just I want my water.
Aaron, is that water with air quotes? No, that's absolutely water. I figured I should be smart <laughs> and not stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but afterwards, it will not be water when I'm done. <laughs> it's great to see uh, Captain Givens, our friend is on. And, He's uh, here, I know. Yeah, she just got left that Barnes and Noble. Oh, you creep. <laughs> uh, so, um, Aaron's a good dear friend for a long time, and um, I'm really thrilled that you um, you decided to present. So, the stage is yours. Thank you. you, thank you for having me. I'm honored, and thank you all of my people who showed up. I'm I was so excited every time one of your names popped up on the top of the screen. So, <laughs> thanks for the support. It means a ton. And now, here we go. So I'm Erin Karp. I'm a fine art photographer. I focus mostly on architectural abstracts. I started in a dark room and on film many, many moons ago, and I didn't transfer, tra ooh, ooh, I'm nervous. I didn't move to digital until 2009, and that was a very reluctant change. Um, but I still shoot manually and in natural light and I still make my own prints. I don't use Photoshop. Um, the images are what I, I shoot, I show you what I actually see. <laughs> so um, I am going to share my screen. Okay, and this needs to be. Okay, so here we go. That's me. My website's on the bottom, my Instagram's on the bottom, but I also have it at the end of this presentation too. Um, so I shoot really minimalistic kind of work mostly. Um, my dad is an abstract oil painter. Some of his work is behind me. And he's a color master and I think he's amazing. And he's a huge influence on my eye. I grew up with his paintings all over the house. And I definitely think there was an internal um, effect on the way I see the world. So I'm gonna show you different countries. This isn't all just one project, but we're gonna start in Italy. Um, and then we'll move on to Spain and the Netherlands. So this is, this was taken at a winery in Bargino, Italy. Um, I was in Tuscany for a photography workshop and I read an article in the New York Times right before I left about this winery and it's an architectural marvel. And it was a dream trip for me to be able to see this place and to photograph it. Um, and I proposed it to the group that, that I was, in, in Italy, and nobody wanted to go. I was the only person and I kept pushing and nobody wanted to go and I couldn't believe it. And so we had a driver taking us from place to place all week and he knew how desperately I wanted to photograph this place. And he, he said to me one day, we took everybody to San Gimignano and he said, Aaron, it's a half hour drive from here. If you wanna go shoot this winery, let's go. You're literally only gonna have 20 minutes and we're gonna to have to get back in the car. And I was like, oh my God, let's go. So wait a second. But, How did you know that it was so special before you went? I, I, I saw some photos of the, uh, sorry, I just wanna let her in. Um, Jay will do that, don't worry about okay. it. I saw photos in the paper and just the shapes. I mean, I'm a very shape driven person when I'm shooting shape and light and shadow. Um, and I, I had to go to this place. So right. thank God for Michelino who took me. This was the first photograph I made from the parking lot actually of this winery. Um, and this was really thrilling for me. So here's another one of the images. Miss Erin from next door. That's it. Hi, I'm gonna meet you, Trisha. <laughs> okay. Um, so I actually just read about this winery online. It hasn't been picked up very much somehow. I don't really understand, but I have not seen it photographed the way I, I captured it at all. So 
Now we're in Siena. This is um, Fonte Branda. It was, I just thought the light coming in was so beautiful. Um, so, and this is in Vernazza. Like I said, I see in shapes and it's in color, thanks to my dad. Do you, do you ever go back at different times of the day? Yep. For harder light, softer light? Yep. Um, I have photographed many of the places that I've been to repeatedly. Mm. And it's, unfortunately, I haven't been back to Bargino. I'm dying to actually go back to that winery and spend real time, not just 20 minutes. Yeah. But um, yeah, there's a photo I'll get to in Spain that I've gone back to that locale several times and um, the light is never the same. And I've never been able to get the same photograph as I did that I'll show you. So, so. when you shoot something, yep. so you take the shot, does the thought come to you, wow, I have to come back at this time of day because I think it'll be even more striking? Like no. The no, nope. I mean, I'm usually just wandering and it's, I'm always in busy cities, touristy places, and I'm always looking for a quiet moment, mm. and, you know, like an escape from the chaos. Um, so I consider my work kind of meditative and calming, which is what I need usually, <laughs> like right now. Um, <laughs> like truth. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, so this is just a rooftop in Florence and I, I went up to the pool on the roof of the hotel I was staying at and I looked over and I saw this and I ran downstairs and got my camera and made the photograph. This I shot in Bologna, Italy. And again, it's just, I'm walking and I see, I saw this wall with the pipe and the wires and I was like, oh my God. And I just had to take the photo. So um, this is another one where I was in Porto Venere in Italy and I rounded this corner and from the end of the street, this was all I saw, this image, and I was so excited. Um, this is the Duomo in Italy, in Florence, pardon me. And this is another one where I, I turned a corner and this was morning. all I could see. Um, yeah, I don't, this is just how I see. Um, and I don't, like I said, I don't use Photoshop. People are always like, well, when did you do to it? And I didn't do anything to it. This is the actual image. They all are the images. This is obviously in Venice. And I couldn't believe that I walked past this gondolier in this position. He had no idea I took the photo. I never even saw his face. Um, but just all the, the lines and how his hat lines up and the lines mimicking in the shirt. And I just, oh, it just made me so excited. So it's actually a, an emotional reaction. Oh yeah, every single time. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. Um, this is in Sevilla, Spain, where I lived for a year, and it's one of my favorite places on earth. And they have these coverings over streets to keep the sun out. And this is one of them. I just thought it was so beautiful, the texture and the repetition and, you know, the abstraction. I think there's just beauty everywhere in small details if we pay attention. Um, so that's kind of how I wander around. Whenever I'm traveling, I go without any kind of itinerary. And I'm always better off if I'm alone when I'm traveling because I don't feel like I've got anybody like waiting for me to make these photos. And I love the freedom of just being able to wander without a plan and stop when something inspires me. And that's when I make my best photographs, I think. And what are you shooting with, Aaron? Um, I'm shooting with an old camera, a Nikon D300. <laughs> mm -hmm. Time to upgrade, but that's another project. Um, so again, like I said, I see in shapes and colors and abstractions, essentially. Um, and this was just one of these moments. So I named this Alegria, Joy, Happiness. Um, I think the colors are just, it just made me feel good. 
And this, I photographed at the Real Alcazar in Sevilla. Um, like, I mean, the skies in Sevilla are almost always blue like this. There's just perfection. And, you know, again, it's just a light and shape and minimalist kind of, this is how I see. This is one of my favorite newer images um, on my last trip to Sevilla in October, 2019. I, this was the view out of my Airbnb window every morning and I'd open the shutters and go out onto my balcony and see this. And I finally made the photo. Uh, this is a, just a beautiful day in Sevilla as well. So. And how long do you stay in the space, Aaron? Until I feel like I made a photo that I'm happy with. Oftentimes I only make one photo and then I move on. Um, and then other times I'll, I change angles and I, I do, uh, I try different things basically. Um, so this is a wall that we walk past in Granada every day. And this is one where I actually noted the light changing constantly. Mm -hmm. Sometimes this wall was just peachy whitish. Um, but I thought it was so interesting with the roof shadow and then just a little bit of nature. I mean, the suggestion of nature. So a dialogue kind of between architecture and nature. And this was the image that I was talking about earlier, where uh, this was taken in Sevilla in um, Barrio Santa Cruz. It's all pedestrian streets, really narrow streets. And I saw the light falling on this wall and like this, and I crouched down against the other side of the street, against a building, and waited for passersby to move, crossing my fingers that the light wouldn't change in the meantime. Um, and I made only two yeah. photographs. This is the one that I did better. Actually bringing the solemnity to the national anthem and okay. turning. Okay. So I've gone back to this wall many times since and the light is never the same. And I, it's not something I can reproduce at all. I've tried just for curiosity and it's not possible, which I think is awesome. Aaron, do you take any notes like, you know, this wall at four o'clock, you know, July 7th, you, you do anything like that? I try to, I sometimes do, it depends. I mean, often when I'm driving, if I drive past something that's amazing at a certain time, I'll put a note in my phone, like come back to this spot at this time during this time of the year. I don't usually go back though realistically. I'm more of a spontaneous, it needs to happen when I'm, when I'm out kind of thing. Um, but yeah, this, I love this image. And this is one that I saw in 2018, 17, one year I went to Sevilla, 2018. And I didn't get to make this photograph when I was there. I was traveling with somebody and you know, that whole, I don't want to have somebody waiting for me thing. So I thought about this wall for an entire year. And then when I went back in October, 2019 alone, I was determined to find this wall again. And I did, and I made this photograph and it's just, I called it wall of peace, Muro de Paz, because it just brings me such a sense of calm. Like I said, I'm often just looking for tranquility when I'm shooting because there's such busy cities that I'm in. And you prefer the cities than the forest. Yeah, I prefer architecture at this point. I started out shooting details in nature yep. um, and I've just gravitated towards architecture uh, over the years. It's just been kind of a natural progression. Yep. Um, <laughs> so this image, oftentimes when I'm making photographs, people walk by and they're like, why is she shooting? What does she see? Because this was literally a construction site in Sevilla and I'm the only person who stopped to appreciate it, but I just found such beauty in all the textures and the lines and the, the neutral palette and, um, you know, all of this, so. And this is just a shadow piece, just super minimalistic. Um, taken at a very touristy spot in Sevilla, 
Um, but I was more attracted to the shadows cast than the actual structure. And this is the structure. So this was kind of a neat, but. And this was a very difficult photograph because it was handheld in a dark cathedral in Sevilla, La Catedral. And I'm shooting up at this buttress ceiling. I just thought this was so gorgeous. And I'm very proud of myself for not having shaky hands and pulling it off. <laughs> this is another image made in the same cathedral while well, going up the Giralda Tower. And I was in a horde of people, like where you're being pushed sort of up these stairs and I couldn't stand it. And I saw the light coming through this tiny little window and like put myself in it and made a few photographs. Um, but again, handheld in very little light. And, this and is all, the, all these with natural light, right? Well, everything natural light. And I don't, like I said, no Photoshop ever. I don't, there's what I'm showing you is how I saw it and what I shot. Um, this was in the Banos de Maria in the Alcázar in Sevilla. And this was in a room filled with people, literally elbow to elbow. Again, unbelievably low light. And I'm amazed that I was able to hold the camera with my shutter open for so long and make this image, which I just, uh, makes me feel really good. There's a print back here, but it's uh, very glary. And this, like I said, texture and lines and all of that is a big motivator for me. So this was another construction site in Granada, Spain. And I walked past this, the facade of this building and it was this golden hue and I couldn't believe my eyes. Here I spent quite a long time actually like pro at least 20 minutes photographing different sections of this building wall. Um, this was a, the ground in Granada. I was sitting at the top of the restaurant after the rain. Um, I just thought it was so beautiful, the repetition and the light reflecting off the wet ground and the shadows and all of it. And this is in Utrecht. We are now in the Netherlands. Um, this is when I got out of the train station to go visit a good friend of mine, and it was this psychedelic structure. I made a few photographs. This is in Amsterdam in the Museum Plain. It's a, um, a reflection of the Van Gogh Museum. Mm -hmm. And I didn't do anything to this photo. People ask me all the time, but I didn't do anything. It's just, that's the image. This is in the same square. This is the state alike museum. Um, and again, I just thought the intersections of all these lines were just, I just thought it was such a beautiful moment. And I forgot to say titling work is often difficult for me. So <laughs> this one was inspired by Bjork, one of my favorite musicians on the planet. Um, and actually I used a bunch of segments of her, there's my niece, of my, uh, of her songs for titles. Um, and actually I did a whole bunch of titling for work from Spain with flamenco terminology. <laughs> and this is in Utrecht at a museum. Um, I just thought this was so interesting. The, all the repetition and the light coming through this glass and the abstraction that it made. And this is in the Rijksmuseum, just in the entrance. Uh, the light that comes through the ceilings, the, it's like a full glass ceiling, it's just so beautiful. So this is one of the photos I made there. This, A History of Touch, another Bjork lyric. Um, this is just really beautiful light coming into that same museum in Utrecht. Um, are, yep. When, when you go out at night, yeah. I mean, that's a different challenge, right? Oh yeah. yeah. Right. So, do you come back during the day thinking like, "Oh, that was that was interesting. I have to come back." You know, night versus day. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it it depends on what the uh, it depends on what the subject is, you know. Okay. But I do. I go. I go back. Um. 
And this was in Amsterdam. I was going, my dad lived in Amsterdam for five years and I went to find his old apartment. And this was on the walk to his apartment. I just thought the light coming onto the staircase was so gorgeous. And that's a wrap for me. This is a construction site. I, right after I saw the photo, the, the image that I titled Obra Sevilla, I walked down another narrow little pedestrian street and I looked into this window of this building and the light was literally just falling on these construction materials like this. And I just was like, oh, serendipity. This is amazing. And and, um, and, and you're selling prints on your site, right? I sell prints, but reach out to me. It's I don't have my website set up for, you can't just buy it from my website. So okay. reach out to me. And so you have the cutest fan. In I know that's my niece and I'm so happy she's here. My God. Her. You know, we, you have to start photographing her. I, I believe me, I have. I made them a <laughs> book of this girl. She has got the biggest tongue in the world. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. And she's now a rock star. She is. It's, she's the sweetest. Ever. But Aaron, I mean, the, like, the whole process for you, how long does it take you to, you know, like recognize, all right, that was a great shot, like, and then you go back and print it? Or do you print everything to no. see how it looks? No, 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 no. Like, I, when I, I know my super hitters the second that I see them you do. I make them yeah um and those are ones that I'm like I'm absolutely printing this even if it has nowhere to go right now right I, I'm still like I said I learned in the dark room and I love having an image in my hand I still love printing you know yeah. um I think the print is just as important as the actual photograph so that's how I and, and do you sometimes either disappointed or thrilled when you get the print and say, well, you know, I, I didn't think it was going to be that compelling. And then it is or vice versa. I thought there was more there and there wasn't. Um, not usually. I mean, I print my you own know. work, so I'm the one who I make. I make sure the print is what I would want. It's I make sure the print's what I want. Right. Be. Um yeah, I mean, I don't, I've had some issues, like I printed a piece, actually a photograph that I made in Sevilla in 2019 that I loved, a building facade with a lot of shadows and it was kind of a grayish wall. And when it printed, it printed sort of violet, which I could never reproduce in a million years. I don't know what the glitch was that day, but I actually loved it. And so I made two prints and well, that'll never happen again. Um, yeah, but, yeah. Actually, everybody in the chat room is is in awe. I mean, everyone loving it. Really, I don't even see the chats. Yeah, you got to get back to the hey. chat. Room. Wait, I just want to uh, show off my dad for a second because he's amazing. Oh, this is your dad's work. Okay. Yeah, this is one of my dad's little paintings, but he's a really incredible artist and a huge inspiration for me. And he's on here. Hi, Danny. <laughs> So that's it. Thank you, guys. Hey, Aaron, maybe you could uh, stop the uh, the share and uh, show the painting again, so you could we could see it in a bigger view. Oh, good idea. Okay, hang on. Okay. Now show it. Um. Wait, I don't see you guys though. Up a little higher. Always oh, here. Uh -huh. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. I'm trying to find the zoom. Okay. There you go. There we go. So this is just a little guy, but I've got another big one on the floor back here. Anyway, we just moved into this house, so I don't really have any art hanging up yet. <laughs> Sorry. Great. Well, Aaron, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you, you guys. Uh, thank you. Thank you. No, for you're the best. It, it. No, thank you. And um, what, what's your niece's name? Adelaide. Adelaide, you <laughs> you have to come on each week. You're uh, you're an inspiration for the, for every toothpaste um, <laughs> client in the world. I agree. She's also one of the funniest little humans I know. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Aaron. So thank you, take, Frank. Thank you, everybody. Let's just take a minute break, and then we'll have um, an old dear friend Janice Mellon um, to um, present her work. 
Also, everyone should know, go to YouTube and uh, subscribe to projections.live. That would be great if you guys can do that. Let's take a minute break and we'll get right into Janice. While we're waiting for, for Frank to come back, I just wanna say hello to all those people that I see your names, some of whom I see your faces. Stephen, hello. Nikki, Don and Leslie, Tommy. Um, I'm not seeing everybody because there's so many people here, but um, people that I recognize. So thank you for coming and welcome. And I'll start as soon as Frank comes back. So. Here we are. Let, let's go. It is great that all, <laughs> everyone's family and friends show up. It's um, that's the whole idea behind this. It, it's a nice, uh, it's a nice community, and knowing that you have your fans is great. Really great. So, Janice, it's, it's all yours, dear. It's all mine. Okay. So, I want to say thank you to Frank for inviting me to do this, and it was lovely to do it together with Lynn Bianchi, who's a dear friend of mine and a great photographer, and Aaron Karp, who was my new friend, yep. and lovely, terrific photographer. And thank you all for coming. And um, for the people that don't know me, I'm been living the last year and a half during this COVID time in Italy. And I only came into New York a few days ago and I'm here just for a few weeks. So I don't really have my studio or my work around me. So I'm gonna show you a quick three minute video about my work and about me, sort of an interview with me in Italy, just to get everybody's appetite whetted. And after that, I will go through a little bit of a slideshow of my development as an artist. So I'm gonna share my screen and show you this little three minute video. So here we go. Let me just get to it here. Let me go to view, view full screen, enter full screen and go. My husband and I had been coming to this town in Pietro Santo for summers since 1979. And this is really an artist town, a lot of sculptors. I started photographing Italian architecture in my work and he started making sculpture in marble. So we found every excuse to come back. Hello, my name's Janice Melman and I'd like to invite you in to see my studio and talk to you a little bit about my work. So follow me into my studio. I photographed architecture in a very abstract way. I was working in a darkroom on a master printer in black and white. And as my work has been developing, they're becoming very colorful. My work takes ordinary everyday objects and creates abstraction from ordinary things. Well, the last three months we were in New York and we were closed up with the pandemic and I wanted to create a body of work that emotionally expressed how I felt about the moment. This photograph is called Contagion. And if you look at this photograph, you see that these pieces lead into these pieces and they kind of move into each other and then they end on top where you come into the red. And I started to photograph Corona beer bottles, just something with the title Corona. And it's almost like an explosion and things are completely out of control and in just going everywhere. And so this was also a reaction to the moment that we're living in right now. Recently, this book called A World History of Photography um, by Naomi Rosenblum included one of my photographs, full page. So this photograph was my scarves. And I was just sort of tossing them around in composition with light and shadow, and it's called Veiled Emotions. I always thought of myself as a photographer, never as a woman photographer. And I said, I'm gonna consciously make things that are coming from a woman, looking inward. So if you look at this, it's very abstract and it's very colorful but it's actually one of my bras that's in the photograph in a very abstract way. It feels very Spanish to me. And then more recently, I have some of these which are very sensuous. And what it really is in reality, it's two silver colored boots 
lined up and I'm looking through them and beyond is the price tag. It's a religious experience to take a photograph when you know everything is perfect and you know that you created something that really will be magical. Okay, so that's me. And that's just for the people that don't know me, just a little introduction. Well, so Janice, why did you create that? Is that something you had already done or is that for us? The film that I just showed you? Yeah. I didn't create it. It was created for CUNY television. I also teach. I'm a professor in City University and um, I was in Italy and they wanted to do a segment on me for CUNY television. So they asked me to have someone film me in Italy and then they edited it. And it's a much longer film with things also about my teaching. So I just thought as an introduction, it's so great. well put together that I would just show you an introduction to me with that and then Great. show you some work in a kind of a slideshow. Great. Should I go on and just start showing you a little bit of the, I'll go yeah. and share my screen again. Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen again and um, I'm going to go here. And now let me just take this and go to the first image and get bigger. One minute, let me go view. Uh, it doesn't let me go on the bottom. Oh, enter full screen. Okay. So, and let me move this box with our faces. Okay, good. This way I can get to the, yeah. So this was an exhibition that I had um, in Italy a year ago. And you can see the scale of the pieces. And these were many, this whole wall on the right side are many of the pieces that had to do with the pandemic. The one on the very right is called, um, follow the yellow brick road. And I really was very affected by the pandemic. And I think my way of getting through anything in life is always to create art that sort of deals with what my emotions are for the moment. And so the idea of these are actually belts and ribbons, but it feels to me a little bit like Dorothy's yellow brick road. And I just wanted to get out of the place that we were in. And there are others that have to do with the pandemic, but I'll come back to them later. And then this is an exhibition I had about four or five years ago out in Quag in Long Island. And the work is very colorful and you get a sense of um, the movement and the textures and so forth. But now what I wanna do is show you from where I started and how I've come to where I am. So this is a very beginning um, photograph from like the early 1980s. And I was photographing architecture and there was like a play on this, this frame on the wall that has a, a person laying down. And then it looks like the person really belongs in the bed with the lighting. And I've always been involved with lighting and geometry and shapes and um, let me just, yeah. So this one is an early photograph in Italy. I do spend half my life in Italy for the last 40 years. So um, I started doing these things with Italian architecture, time exposures, where I would set up a tripod and I would do these long exposures and it would create a kind of light that really didn't exist. But as I was looking at it, it created, so I love this division. This was 1982 or I think 1982, but it stands out as one of my favorite photographs from that period. And then this is, very quiet meditative moment with beautiful light and shadow coming out of that singular window. It happens to be the busiest hallway in the world. So this was the exit to the Sistine Chapel where thousands of people go through to look at Michelangelo's ceiling every five seconds. And literally I said to my husband who was with me, I said, make a, a body block. I need like two seconds. And he blocked the people from coming into this hallway. I made a horizontal and a vertical. And this was in the old days when you did film. So you really didn't know what you were going to get until you developed the film. But I think this is just such a beautiful image. And um, I was doing these things in the underside of churches and with a tripod, these long time exposures, and they feel like charcoal drawings. My work has always felt like it was from another medium. And then I, at a certain point, I got tired of black and white. I was working black and white with black and white film and I wanted to work in color and I started to shoot in color and I didn't like in the 1980s what color prints looked like. I'm really in love with the deep, rich black and whites that I was getting with gelatin silver prints. So what I decided to do was paint on my photographs. So I 
would print an abstract image of architecture, and then I would apply thin veils of color to small segments of the photograph. And so then I started painting more boldly on the photographs, and I kind of got famous in the 80s for painting on my photographs. I was in some history of photography books and had my first show on Madison Avenue at the Forum Gallery of my painted photographs. So these, this is a show in 1986 at Forum Gallery. And then I continued to paint on the photographs and this you get a sense of there I am very young. So this is in the 1980s. And um, that more photos where I'm just painting on little segments of the photograph. They're all still architectural, looking down and very quiet and beautiful lighting. And then uh, at a certain point I got tired of painting and it just wasn't, I, every time I would put up a photograph on my wall in my studio, I would take it down. I'd spend a week or two painting each image on the photo. And every time I would paint, I was like, I'm ruining it. And I'd rip them up and then go back in the dark room, which was also a process. And I'm printing them large and till I get the printing right. And I'd paint on them and I'd throw them. And I realized that this series were much more colorful in black and white than with color. And so then for the next number of years, I started working in black and white with light and shadow and spaces and depth and dimension. And you don't know what plane is coming forward and what plane is going back. I love this one with the triangles. So you don't quite know where the triangle is lying. And, um, and then in 1996, I gave birth to this beautiful little baby girl and I was like stuck in the house taking care of a baby and um, I'm an artist and a photographer. And so I couldn't stop looking at her. And I thought there's gotta be a way to turn her into my art. So I started photographing close-ups of her body uh, creases. So if you look at this photograph, it's actually, this is her elbow and this is her thigh and this is like her belly crease. And I was printing these photographs simultaneously with printing my architectural pictures. And then I thought, you know something, these would look great together. So I started to print them and frame them and then mount them as a unit. And so you, I had a show in like 1997. And so you get a sense of what I was doing with the combination of the baby's body and the architecture. And the writer who was the curator for the show loved these pieces. And he said, do you realize that these are all volumes? You, you were just a, um, a vessel. These are like vessels, volumes. You were just pregnant for nine months. And it was like you were a volume holding the baby in the belly. And now you're creating these volumes to hold the baby. And it was like, psychologically, I never thought of that but my work always reflects what's really going on in my deepest psyche. So these are all these kind of vessels containing the baby's body. Here you see more of the creases and the foot and the elbow. And then the kid got older, you know, she was now two years old and wouldn't lay still and kept moving and the baby fat fell off and I sort of lost interest in photographing her. So then I started working in black and white and, um, uh, again, back in, I started doing digital prints for the first time in like 2000. And I didn't know Photoshop and I didn't have a printer. In those days, they had something called an iris printer. And I had always dreamed of printing on a watercolor paper because my work really renders itself to that. And so this was an opportunity. And I started working with a place called Lamont Editions. And I found a woman who was fabulous to co collaborate with. And so I would go there with my negatives and she would put them on the computer and we'd work them together in Photoshop and then they would print them for me. And these are some of the beginning iris prints, also this one. So they're like 30 by 40 inches and they were my first digital prints. And then um, I started to print myself. I started to get my own printer, started working with slides, scanning the slides and then printing digitally. And this is an interesting uh, discussion about going from reality to abstraction. So this photograph is looking down in Italy at a floor with beautiful light and shadow. And then I'm in my studio and I um, take that proof of that photograph and I throw it in my trash bin and I look down and this photo is the photo in my trash bin and this is the light on other papers in my trash bin. I go, oh my God, that's so beautiful. I've got to grab my camera. So I ran up, took photographs in this sort of trash bin, moving things around. And then I made this 
got rid of the original photo that got me there and then started making these beautiful abstractions just with light and shadow with subtle color. And I was working with slides and then scanning them and then working in Photoshop. Then I had a couple of shows in Italy of those. This is those three pieces together and then some of the pieces with the baby. This is a museum in Italy. And then I went to Morocco. <clears throat> and when I was in Morocco, I started photographing these beautiful um, uh, sort of these curves in these mosques. And someone said to me, you know, is that undulated paper? And I'm like, no, that's like heavy cement and it's this big structure. And, and so I thought, but why can't I photograph undulated paper? I already did those things in the trash bin. So then I started ripping paper and started tossing it around with light and shadow, sometimes reincorporating my own photographs of the paper and putting the paper on top of it. And I started doing these and they become very Trump Lloyd. They almost jump off the page. Janice, so, one second. Yeah. Because right. you're like a runaway train. I'm sorry. I just know it's beautiful. No, 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 no. It's beautiful. <laughs> but what I want to ask you is how you evolve so naturally like, you, you know, you, your steps just keep on coming and you're totally fine to leave this and go here and then go here and go here. It, it's really a beautiful thing to listen and to see how this evolution, you know, well, for that's why I'm showing you this because it's, it's beautiful. Interesting it's really thing great. To see an evolution. I have a collector friend who was staying with me in Italy and I have my studio in Italy, which is also the little guest house. So they were in the room and I have pieces on the wall from all the various periods of my career. And he said, you know, it's like being in a retrospective. I love seeing the connection from what you did in 1994 to what you're doing now. And it's always me. So the interesting thing is that there's absolutely a thread in all my work that follows this thing about light and shadow and geometry and very rich blacks and whites. I love all those grays in between. And up until this point, they're very subtle color, but when you come more recently, it's like a blast of color. So yeah, that's interesting. So should I continue or yeah? Yes, yes, yes. Right. Just, I needed to make that point because- I appreciate that. I'm glad to hear you because I don't even know if anybody's still out there. So. Yeah. No. no. <laughs> okay. Okay. I will continue. Yes. So then I started to put a little bit more color in again, working with the reams of paper and sort of putting things on top of my own photographs. So like I'm reinventing my work through my work. And um, this feels like the Guggenheim Museum, but it's rolls of paper with very subtle color. And then this is architecture. So at the same time, I'm looking at architecture that almost feels like cutouts of plastic or something. This is also a building in California. It's that um, the Disney uh, Center, or so. I don't know. It's, it's, I don't remember. And um, what's the architect? Frank Gehry in LA. So anyway, this is from that. And then I had a show in Chelsea um, in a very nice gallery about eight years ago, 10 years ago, I don't, I can't keep track of time. And this, this was the big pieces. It was a big gallery. She wanted very large pieces. And the show's theme was like some of the, which is architecture and which is paper because the paper ones are very architectural and the architectural ones look like rip paper. So it was kind of a play on what the reality is that the pictures are taken from. And then um, in 2012, my mother passed away and I started dealing with that by photographing broken glass. So it was like an emotional thing with some, something in my life was shattered. And I started putting things together with broken glass. And then I started combining things. So um, this is the first time that I was like collaging in Photoshop. So this was a series of photographs that I lined up some of paper and some of architecture. Actually in this, I think it's all paper photographs, but then I lined them up one next to the other. 
And my dear friend, Lynn Bianchi, who you heard from earlier, is one of my great critics. And we've been friends for 30 years and colleagues for 30 years. And I always have her come over once a year to look at my work. And she's a really good write on critic. And she looked at them and she said, you know, they're really good, but what's missing is you have a line dividing each of the pictures. You should find a way to have them smoothly move into each other so it feels more natural. And that was such a brilliant thing to say. And I then used Photoshop to make them move smoothly into each other. So this is a series of photographs that are collaged, but with Photoshop, I make a more natural kind of transition from one picture to the next. This photograph's been very successful and I've sold quite a few of this one. Well, Janice, um, when, yeah. someone, when someone comes with a suggestion, you, you absorb it and say if that makes sense or not, but you're open to that, that, um, that collaboration of thought. You know what, Frank, we're artists and it's great to be in a studio and it's great to make art and it's great to look at the work. But I have a couple of really great friends who some of whom are out there now, including Don and Leslie and Lynn and my husband, Ron Melman, who's a great sculptor and my daughter, Elena Melman, who's a great critic. And I always pass the work in front of them before I have a show because I make a lot of work. I edit and edit and edit. And maybe in a year I make 12 to 14 photographs that I'm happy with, even though I've shot hundreds and printed hundreds, but I come down to my best 12. And then I always have Ron, Elena, Lynn, and Don and Leslie come for a studio visit because you never know. And I like to see other people's vision and other people's perceptions. And um, people that are in, you know, know me and follow me can only come up with really brilliant suggestions. So that was great from Lynn. And this picture is a print coming off of a large printer. This is the biggest print I ever made. And this is in a hotel in Italy up in this very beautiful Relais Chateau Hotel framed and up, but you can see the size of it <clears throat> coming out of the printer. And then this was a show. Wait, what is that feeling like? What, to make that what, giant picture? Yeah, like, I mean, you, like the way you said, it's coming out. Like, what, what is the emotion around that? Well, this was great because I'd never printed anything so large. And they wanted me, they commissioned me to do this enormous piece. It's nine feet long and three feet high. And the big problem was figuring out how to frame it because nobody makes a frame that size. There's no molding that size. I mean, it was like they had to cut down a tree and like, you know, make this enormous 12 foot molding. It was quite a challenge to get it framed. My job was to get it printed and get it over and get it delivered. And then I just said, you figure it out because I don't have a clue how we're going to frame this. I don't, I should have put a picture up after here of it in the yeah. room. Next Maybe time. I'll find that next time. But anyway, yeah. And then this was a show again in Italy and you get a sense of some of those long pieces that are the collage. And then this starts the next series, which I'll talk about in a second. Oh, then we had the flood, uh, Hurricane Sandy. And I had two terrible floods, 2012, October. And my father's house was flooded nine feet in the basement. And my husband's studio was flooded three feet. Yeah. I don't know who's saying, yeah, is that, who is that? No. Oh, okay. I thought they were responding to that. But anyway, um, I went through one of the worst times ever dealing with these two floods and I was coordinating two cleanups. And on the first day that I was alone in my studio with nobody that I had to coordinate for anything, things were practically cleaned up. I look in my trash bin and it says flooding is the number one natural disaster. There was this little folder in there. And I couldn't believe that was in my trash bin and the light was hitting everything. And I had found this photograph on the street that somebody had made of a street sign in California that said hope. And I thought, you know something, I'm gonna throw this in the trash, move everything around and create something. And literally it pulled me out of an incredible depression. I made this photograph and it just gave me hope. And it was just, it was really a re reaction to a very, very difficult time. And then what happened next? So Leslie Wayne, who's out there, um, is a very, very fabulous painter and well-known painter. And she was commissioned to do a big mural and she, it was really big. And so to do something different, she painted these rectangles on mylar, like transparent paper. And they were all these different colored rectangles. And then she trimmed the rectangle and she cut them out and she threw the edges away in a plastic bag. 
And she said, you know something, I bet Janice could do something with this. And she gave me this enormous bag of her trash. And um, I took these pieces of mylar that had little bits of color on the end and literally spent a year making a whole series from them. So this photograph comes from these little pieces of scrap paper that had little bits of color on the edge. And I held them up to the light and I photographed That's them from above. What? Let somebody else, don't worry about that. Okay. So anyway, I did all kinds of things. So this is, these are all different angles and views from these little strips of mylar transparent paper with a little bit of color on the edge. And then I had this show, which has many of them. So this is one from those things. This is another, this one, the ones back here. I really literally made 14 amazing photographs using those little pieces of mylar. And then I was really kind of stuck in them and like, what am I gonna do next? And thankfully, Leslie said to me, you know what? I'd like those back because maybe I could do something with them. And she actually made a kind of interesting sculpture from them. And I was very sad to give them up, but actually it was good because it forced me to move on. So, so does Leslie get a credit? She, I'm giving her credit right here and she's out there. All so right. you'll, you'll listen to her afterwards. Anyway, so continuing on, my most important show I ever had was at the Museum of Modern Art in Bogota, Colombia. And I had the whole top floor of the museum. And this was about four years ago. So these are some of my pieces in that show. This is the museum. And um, this is what the show looked like. And then more recently, three years ago, four years ago, I was talking about this in my video. I started to say, I wanna do something that relates to being a woman. I turned a certain age and I thought, you know, I just wanna look inward a little bit as a woman. So I'm gonna use fabrics that women would use. So I got these kind of knitted things and I started making photographs with these knitted things and they look a little bit like blood or veins or arteries. I was just like saying, I'm looking inward. And then I started pulling out my scarves and I started tossing my scarves around and I made this photograph with my scarves. And then I decided to incorporate my intimate garments. So I used my bras. And as I had said, my mother had recently passed away and she left all this beautiful glassware. So I started to throw in some of her glassware that she had left. And it was like a connection of being a woman to my mother and to her objects and my intimate things. And then this is not of that, but it's very figurative. And it looks like a pubic area and it looks like a belly button and it looks like veins and arteries and a hip and a thigh. And these are again, very organic. I'm not gonna talk about that one, but this also has some of the, and it's reflection. So I started working with reflective things using some of the things my mother had left. And so it's all about reflection, thinking back and reflecting on things. And then I had this great show in London. And so you get a sense of what those look like and the scale of them. And then I come back to my studio, I'm doing other things. And they're again, very sensuous. These are shoes. I found these silver shoes and I just like create these things with them. And this I actually found in a market in Forte de Marmi in Italy. And it was literally these two silver boots and it looks just like a vagina. I mean, it was just, I couldn't stop myself. And um, then it seems to be that these were all vaginas. So this one was actually a reflective bag, but it feels very sensual. And, oh, and then we get to the pandemic. And then I start to think I have to do something connected to the pandemic. This is a caution sign and all this reflection. And then this I told you about before in the video, I use Corona beer bottles. And if you look carefully over here, it says problems, uh, risk. So it's like, I was just trying to um, reflect the moment. And this is an interesting photograph during the pandemic. Um, I took those beer bottles and I put them into these, these, this glassware that had ridges. And if you look carefully, it says Corona, 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 Corona. And that was what my intent was. And after I printed the photograph, this thing appeared that I absolutely didn't intend. If you look down here, it looks like a woman in profile. It looks like an eye and a nose and a mask and a hat. And I'm like, that is really bizarre. I mean, I know my photographs are very much about making magic, but how did that woman magically appear in the bottom left of that photograph? Really very strange. And 
So anyway, and then this I talked about before, it's um, uh, follow the yellow brick road. And now at the end of all of that this year, these are all brand new from now. I said, I don't wanna do the pandemic anymore. I wanna get out of the pandemic. So I started to incorporate these glass balls and this is called something like, um, uh, I don't know, what if, looking in my, um, what is it called when you look in to get the future in a glass ball? Somebody help me. Um, I'm losing my memory. At any rate, I'm looking toward the future. And these are all um, using things looking toward the future. And so is this- um, Crystal ball, crystal ball. Looking in my crystal ball. And so that's what those were. And this one also is looking in the crystal ball and um, looking at clouds in the sky. And, um, and this is the most recent, very, very new from a month ago. And I'm working with also these beautiful transparent layers of color. And um, I found this new object. And this is my most recent photograph, working with color and light and geometry. And that's it. And then I just had this show right now. It's still on in Pietra Santa Italy, if anybody gets there, Barbara Pacci Gallery. And, um, and that's me. And that's the end. So I'm going to stop my share. And if anyone has any questions. <laughs> I tell you, like before, I mean, the chat room is filled with, I mean, everyone is really, really um, blown away by this work. That's really great. Really, really great. Thank you, Frank. Thank you. So, um, uh, so I mean, you, you're showing all the time, right? So do you, you, ha you have a gallery that you know, represents you exclusively. How does it work for you? Um, I've had various galleries over the years in various places all over the world. Right now, I do not have a New York gallery. It would be nice to have somebody representing me in New York. I have someone who's like the best gallery in our town and, and very well respected in Italy now, who's now just started representing me. So that's sort of like gonna probably be an exclusive for now in that part of Italy. Um, I have a gallery in Colombia who represents me and she's kind of exclusive for Colombia. And so, and I have some galleries out in Long Island that do my work, but I don't have an exclusive in the right. world. So yeah, yeah, so I have various galleries that show my work and, and represent me. And what's next? You have any idea? Well, um, I'm in New York for two, three weeks, getting all my pictures printed large, and I'm going back to Italy for the next three, four months. And I'm just going to pick up looking toward the future. That's what the yeah. new images are. So with the Leslie contact with, with her pieces of paper. This is Leslie and Dawn down here. Wave, Leslie. <laughs> but is, is that something that, or, or something like that, would you be open to a collaboration where you're really collaborating where both you know both groups are you know equally and is that something that i don't do well in collaboration i'm a control freak and i can't give up any control i mean i have a fabulous husband who always wants to collaborate with me and it always ends up in terrible fighting so the only way we can collaborate is if like i give him a photograph and then he'll create something three-dimensional around it and i have to step away okay but I'm not really a great collaborator. So asked, asked and answered. <laughs> yeah, I have a question, Janice. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can you just talk a little bit about the difference um, in your approach or your energy or your feelings or your process between working in New York and working in Italy? Yeah, that's an interesting question. Um, when I'm in Italy, I have a different kind of thinking I'm I don't you know what Leslie it's a very hard thing to say I don't really know because really when we come here we open up a door and we open up a life and I immediately move into that life and I make art and I make prints and I do my life and then I close this door and I open that life and I go there and I do the same thing and I don't know if there's a significant difference in the work or the process so there I do proofs because I don't have a large printer. Here I do the big prints. So in terms of the production, here I have my great big printer. I do everything myself. There I work smaller, I make proofs. 
the making of the work. I have two great studios. The light comes in in a different way in both places. In the old days, I used to go out and find photographs. So that was much more inspiring to me to be in Italy because it was all about Italian architecture. And so it was very essential that I was there. But now that I create things with objects and with things around me in a studio setting, I don't really, maybe it's the finding of objects. I go out once a week in search of new things to photograph. So in Italy, I go to the market, I ride my bike, I look around and I come home with a fabulous new thing and I'm all excited and I throw that into my work and it changes what I'm photographing. Whereas in New York, I don't know if I'm that inspired to find new objects and things. Does that answer your question? Yeah, but it's, a different, it's a different energy and a different environment. And you're also, you're also teaching and- when I'm here, I'm teaching, very different. but yeah. now I'm teaching there because I'm teaching online. Right. So I don't know. So each place has its own sort of energy. Each place has a different energy. That's exactly right. Yeah, so. I feel very lucky to have both. But, but that, that's sort of an interesting thing that your environment is an inspiration for its own reasons in different places. That's absolutely true. But also what's going on in my life is the inspiration mostly. Uh, honestly, when I look back at that history, it absolutely reflects at every period what's going on in my life. So the work is a continuation in terms of a geometry and light and shadows and, and you know, construction. And, but the mood and the feeling comes directly from whatever I'm experiencing right now. So, yeah. That gives it a full perspective for sure. Um, any other questions? You know, every, like I said, what, and what do you normally shoot with Janice? Well, um, I have a digital Nikon like D7000 or something, but it never really is important what you shoot with. I mean, I've never, and I'm gonna be very honest, the iPhone is amazing. And I'm embarrassed to say that I can make photographs and blow them up 40 by 60 inches with an iPhone. What? And I can't tell the difference between that and my very expensive digital camera. What iPhone? The yeah. iPhone 11, and I'm about to get the 13 if they ever Wow, come. I guess my camera's better than I thought. My 12 Plus Pro. Or oh, there you go. It, the quality is really blows me away. I'm, I'm embarrassed because I've actually allowed my students to work with their iPhones because the quality is amazing. So, yeah. I mean, you're limited in certain, in certain respects. Like, you can't really get certain kind of close-ups. You can't really do Zoom. You yeah. can't put it, I don't work with it on a tripod, you know, there's some limitations. And when those limitations occur, I grab my camera. But for 70% of what I photograph, I can use my iPhone. And, and images that we saw tonight are on with your iPhone as well. All the last ones, all the more recent ones. Yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, so. oh, that's um, interesting. So, um, who's that? Yeah. Anyone else have any other questions or comments? Like I said, in the chat room for, for the three of you has been a um, has been a beautiful um, a beautiful experience. And uh, Cindy Mathias was here, so that's that makes it a special night in and of itself. Um, Will you so, save the chat so we can see it later? Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, Jay, how do they get to the chat? Janice. Yes. Can you hear my voice? I can. Okay. Do you see my face? I do. Do you know who it is? You're my cousin. Yeah. You got it. It's your cousin. <laughs> I do and know you. I haven't seen you. Gittle. Not Gittle. My mother. Your mother's Gittle. Gittle. Right. That's, that's, Tell that's, me your name. Okay. My mother was Gertrude. Tell okay. me your name. I haven't I'm seen Barbara. You. This is Barbara. Barbara. I haven't seen you in 30 years, but I know you absolutely. Wait, wait, Barbara, you. how did you find out about this, Barbara? I, I sent her an email. My uh, father, I, of course. I find everything out from her father. <laughs> that is I, I'm so, so sweet. I, I'm, so, I'm so proud of my daughter that anything she does, I advertise. Thank you. I know, Gail. Okay, I'm not in New York. I'm in Florida. I live in Florida permanently now. And um, 
my husband finds everything and your father finds us. He thank knows you. always where I am. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming to this. That's so lovely. No, it's, it's good because it, if I also remember correctly, I'm a little old. Wait a second, wait, wait, wait. You don't want to go And I babysat for you. This is a public <laughs> forum. Okay. I'm kidding. I'm not saying no. anything. I'm not saying anything bad. But I Barbara, babysat. let's definitely be in touch after this. It would be lovely to see you. Okay. okay. You're going to have to come to Florida. <laughs> well, or we can have a phone conversation or something. Absolutely. Great. So I, okay. Now I'm going to get off so, and you can no, continue. That's very, very nice. That's so nice. And kudos, you. kudos for your dad for uh, making this connection. That's great. Absolutely. Okay. I'm going to get off now. All right. You, you, you can stay. It's fine. I'm going to listen. All right. <laughs> So everybody, thank you so much for really a, a fun, intriguing evening with these three um, fabulous, fabulous uh, artists. You know, it's um, it was it was really um, it was really Frank. Perfect. Thank you so much for including us. It was a lovely event, and I really enjoyed having this. And thank you, and yeah, Jay, and thank you for all your technology. Yeah, and everyone, uh, you get to see the videos on uh, projections.live. Go to YouTube, subscribe, and you'll see the, the full presentation um, up there in a day or two, two or three days, whatever it is. Um, but okay. yeah, I, I can't thank you, you know, enough, Lynn and Aaron and Janet. Thank you so much, Frank. This was great. For doing it. Uh, and, I think at one time, I think you had as many as 50 participants. Yeah. And, and, uh, some, some people have left. Yeah, and, and if anyone wants, you know, if there are other artists here, who would like to present, please reach out to me. Um, I really try to include everybody because everyone needs a, um, a forum. So any other artist, Janice, we should get your husband on here and we can talk more about that collaboration issue. <laughs> uh, well, if you want to do sculptors, he'd be happy to do a, a thing. Fine. But you do I, photographers, so. No, no, we, we can do a sculpture. That, that, would be, that would be fine. That would be great. We've had illustrators. He'd be great. He'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we have to. Um, yeah, we, we we can figure that out. So everybody, thank you so much for uh, for joining. Again, please go to projections live on YouTube and subscribe. And um, if you want to be, uh, you know, on the on the mailing list, the email list for our coming events, just you know, send me an email. We'll put you on the list, and you'll get all the notices. And we and we'd love to have you. So thank you to everyone. <laughs>